at the board match last night, playing for my club three C's versus Berry, and it was um, in Berry, like their seconds against our thirds, and we significantly upgraded them. Um, I was playing a one <coughs> one sixteen as white, but of course um, many shockers happen in chess. And if you looked at my own Leyland games, I lost to two players around that strength in that tournament. So there's a potential banana skin here. And um, I can go over 15 minutes now, which is pretty good. So maybe I can do some more detail in the opening. Because I usually just skip through the openings. Now I've had a look through the um, game via an engine. But I haven't like wrote anything down or anything. So I'm going to try and do it without an engine. And I hope I don't make any mistakes. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what I improved us to here. Um, before I get started, I hope you've enjoyed my <coughs> bullet games and... Um, Blitz games. I'll do some more in the future. Also, please check out the um, Ch Epic Chess Cafe on um, Chess Cube. You know that um, really popular site. It's um, we're getting more people now, but we could do with some more. And please can you tell your um, chess playing friends to join, and that would be um, much appreciated. Because the more people we get, the better, and we'd have more fun then together as well. And also, regulars who come to the cafe can um, play me for uh, five minute games, three minute games, one minute games um, to go on YouTube. So that's the perk get, you get by joining the cafe. Um, this game, well, I was white. I kicked up <laughs> with E4. Um, by the way, this is the first like video on a long play game I've done since August, so it might be a bit dodgy. I've never actually did my uh, Manchester or Bradford games, but I may come back to them. But this is my new, there with my old opening repertoire, and this is with my uh, new one, which is very, very aggressive, as you're going to see. I've got rid of um, D4 in that, in that um, positional blunder. I've also changed all my black openings. And oh, by the way, good luck preparing against me, because any moment I'll change back to one of my old ones. Or I'll find a new shot. <coughs> Fine. Anyway, I've played E4. And he plays c5, the Sicilian defence, to very sharp, unbalanced opening, which personally I do not like, because I think there is a terabyte of theory, and there is so many sidelines you have to be watch out for. Like, not only have you got to learn the terabyte of theory in knight f3 and d4, the open Sicilians, you also have to learn against, lines against the Grand Prix attack, close Sicilian, more gambit, um, sidelines like the wing gambit in the b3 Sicilian. <coughs> also, um, you have to learn, looks like, taking with the queen as well, like, playing f3 early to try and get a Marazzi bind. There's also even sidelines, like, on board 1, um, we had e4, c5, knight f3, e6, and then bishop e2, which is a sideline which you're never going to see in any books. Or maybe I'll only mention this, like, a footnote. And also, the c3 Sicilian these days seems to have as much favour as the open Sicilian, almost. So anyway, um... There was plenty of, a lot of people in clubs seem to like playing the Grand Prix with knight, F, knight C3 and F4. But personally I prefer just Knight F3. Which is what all the GMs play. It's perfectly sound. It does have a terabyte of theory but white needs, black needs to know it better than white. This is why I don't play it as black. And now of course black has a few moves here you have to learn against. Like Knight C6 for example. Which can, or G6 hyper accelerated dragon. E6 which can lead to say the can or the Shraven Ingen. And there's also, um, well, d6 is what he plays, which is aiming for like a knight off, a dragon, you can aim for a shaven ingun or a Sveshnikov. And um, of course, white um, usually plays d4 here, which is like the main main line, where I'm opening up the position and trying to get active pieces. Because the thing with this trade is, is that I'm going to lose um, a centre pawn for a um, bishop's pawn, but in return, I get more active pieces and better development. And black has to be very careful at the start of Sicilian games. But it's a very good counter attacking opening. If black can survive, then every move black survives is usually getting closer to a favourable end game. Black also gets played down the half open C line. And the results um, are almost are really good for black. Yeah, in fact, it's why a lot of um, GMs don't play E4 at the top level. Because the defensive technique is so wide, they usually like survive white's mating attacks and then win with the extra centre pawn in the end game. Or from the sea line pressure, but at our level, I think the Sicilian isn't as good because of the um, easy to lose quickly is black. But even white can lose quickly in an open Sicilian. Like you see, many games of um, 
why it being smashed up by the Yugoslav attacking 15 moves. Sorry, the um, dragon. By the good old Rook takes C3 sacrifice. And in fact, the game turns into a dragon by transposition. You're going to see the line I have against it. Now, black always takes, unless he's like a passer. And after knight takes d4, knight f6, it's a good idea to attack the um, e pawn because if you don't attack it, then white might play c4 because in the before knight c3, and then one, and then he can play a Marozzi bind, which is awfully boring, and offers black very few winning chances. So knight c3 defending it, and now he goes knight c6, which is like the which is called the Sicilian four knights, but it'll usually transpose into something else. Um, I like to play um, a setter with bishop e3, so we just um, draw some arrows if I can remember how to do them. Um, queen d2. This is a setup that I quite like where I'm going to like <coughs> over protect the e4 pawn so the cat bin in rook takes c3 for by knight takes c4 sacks, which are very common in open Sicilians, especially the dragon. And our castle queen side, which is quite risky because black has the half open c line, and there's a uh, black will expand a lot with a6 and b5. But I can, like, it's good, it's good especially against the fiend shadowed one, such as the dragon. And I have to play it in case he transposes into a dragon, which he does now with g6. Now, GMs like Michael Adams prefer quiet lines, such as bishop e2 in castles. There's a dangerous side line with f4, known as 11 fish. But the most dangerous anti dragon weapon, which gives Black the most heartaches and put the dragon out of fashion for many years, and Bobby Fischer was one of the main people who did it, is to play the move f3. You see, um, this is protecting e4. And uh, <laughs> reduces any threats of any sacks. Also, um, it stops the knight g4, which would harass the bishop and queen combination, which is going to come on d2 and e3. And um, is also the pawn can still go to f4 in some lines, and uh, white is going to castle queenside and throw the kingside pawns, whereas black is going to castle kingside, use the long um, diagonal, throw the ne not usually attacks with pieces, but in this game I get attacked with pawns. Use the c line, maybe bring the queen out to a5, and it's going to be do or die mate attacks. So he plays bishop g7. You see this uh, meaty diagonal. Which makes castle and queenside riskier, but also more fun. And now I complete my <coughs> my battery of queen d2. I'm oh, sorry about the coffin, by the way. So you see, I'm gonna I want to trade off these bishops. If I can trade these off, then because I think black's got black's dark square bishops a bit better because it's like defending his own king and it's like attacking my king as well. So if I can get rid of it for this bishop, then that's a really good swap. And the dark squares around black's king will become weak, and mine will be safer. So we castles, and now there is a few moves here. Um, you can castle long straight away. You can play g4, which is what short liked, or you can play bishop c4, which is the main main line of the dragon and the Yugoslav attack, which is b7 7 e core. If you're interested, the bishop here has got a strong influence, and black usually spends a couple of moves to get rid of it. As you're going to, well, you won't see in this game, but I'll show you an example of that somewhere in um, this game. The bishop is pointed menacingly at f7. It has been developed and it also discourages the d5 break because in the dragon, when you're black, even as a pawn sacrifice, you should calculate the move d5 a lot because it will open up the centre and uh, the best response to a flank attack, which is what white is going to be aiming for, is to counter attack in the centre. That's a very common theme in the dragon. And also when you play the dragon, you're best leaving the pawn at home on e7 where it protects d6, giving black a solid structure. And e5 permanently weakens d5. And also the bishop's pointing more menacingly at f7 then. Now here, um, the most common main line is to play bishop d7. Our castle long. And then rook c8. And with some menacing pressure down the um, c line. So we drop the uh, bishop back. <coughs> Stop any knight takes d4 tricks. And then something like knight e5. And now you're going to see that the next move is going to be to hop into this weak c4 square, which is now protected by the rook. And then white should, and then um, when it does so, white should always take it off with the b3 bishop. 
I know it looks bad, you know, the two bishops, but if what if White lets his dark square bishop drop in these positions, and this also applies, by the way, if you play the um, Siamish Kings Indian in this style, if White's um, dark square bishop drops off, then he's in big trouble because Black's dark square bishop's got a free roam. It will hack White's queenside to shreds. It can never be traded off unless Black blunders it, and White will find it hard pressed to press home his own attack, and Black would have a decisive positional advantage. That's how much. That's how bad it is. That that square bishop to white is very important. And then there's like a toe by a theory from this point. Um, I recommend checking out the um, Karpov v Korchnoi game. I did a video on because that um shows um the um it shows the really good ideas of the dragon like sea line pressure, where the pieces go, the best squares, attacking methods, and a few violent pawn sacks by Karpov. It's really interesting. It's like the main line of the Yugoslav. But anyway, back to the game. Now it's best in the um this line to attack with um pieces rather than pawns. Pawn seems a bit slow when he plays a six. I'm sure you know that he's um playing an expansion with b five. This will uh, hit my bishop. And then he can maybe play b four and then he can bring a rook to b line, queen to a five, get some meat going. And I was kind of out of book at this point because I don't really expect this to be played because it's not supposed to be that good. But the Houdini seems to evaluate it almost as equal, so it can't be that bad. It just seems that White's maybe had better results in practice, or the computer can't see it. I think best maybe is just the castle, but I lunge forward with h4, which is my new hacking style. The common theme in these positions is to um, for Black is like. It's like, you know, I'm sure you've heard of the Saltis variation, it's like blocking up with h5. This looks like a bit of a weakening move, but it is harder to mount the pawn storm now. And usually, um, and I did recently in a, a game in the under 18 county, which um, I'll do a video on if I get the game back, where to break this star and I go, went g4, and then when you, when she took, I went h5 and sacked another pawn, just to open some lines up. You usually have to sacrifice two pawns in these positions, but it's even more dangerous then, because the h lines open more violently. And um, this would be an interesting position to play, but I'm not too keen when black goes h5. I'm going to do some more research into how to punish it. Because a move like that that weakens g5 has got to be like, some punishment you can exert. But it goes e6, which isn't a brilliant move. It looks good um, blunt to my pressure, but I've got too many pieces on d5. Like I'll do some arrows now to describe how many pieces I've got on it. Um, I've got... Yeah, I've got all that aimed at d5, so it's so hard to play the break. And also, he's made too many pawn moves, and he's also getting like his Sicilians mixed up. Like, he's got a dragon formation, a shaven ingon formation, and a Nidor formation. Also, as well, you notice that d6 has got weak all of a sudden. You should leave the pawn on e7 in the dragon, usually, unless it's some like tactical justification or something. I mean, that's weak now. And could drop off at any point, especially when I've got the half open D line. Yeah, and noting any Sicilian is there, especially something like the Nidoff when you play E5 or the Shreshnikov, is that D6 is very weak. Pay attention to that square. So I castle, and um, after a couple of preparation moves, I'm going to be playing H5, sacrificing a pawn and ripping open some lines. He plays Queen C7, which gets the um, C line pressure and threaten some tactics based on my um, loose bishop on c4 because loose pieces lose games. Um, so I drop it back to b3. And I play as rook d8. So he's not really playing it like a dragon, it's being played more like a shaven ing and we are queen c7, rook d8 and all that. Maybe the bishop should come out and then rook c8 is stronger. And now um, I can't really go planning ahead, planning ahead with my attacker I don't think because um, Usually, you want, I want to um, get this knight on d2 from the next exposed spot, and also um, I don't want this knight coming into g3 after um, h5. Knight takes h5. You can notice that my g3 square is weak, and in fact, it's a hole because it can't be protected by another pawn. So, to stop that, I drop the d knight back. Another good idea in the dragon is to overprotect c3 because of any um, rook takes c3 sacrifices to mess up your pawn structure and rip open some lines. But they won't be that strong in this position anyway. Black's made too many pawn moves and there ain't enough peace pressure. But now he gets some of his attack with b5. And he's planning moves like b5, 
b4 to kick the knight away and then maybe hitting me with d5 in the center which would be strong and also as soon as my knight gets kicked out and his knight moves his bishop um, becomes like a monster like pressurizing this b2 point which i'm not too keen on also it can maybe uh, play rook b8 a5 and b4 or bring his knight to a5 then to c4 which he should be doing like um, this and in fact um, this this he should do that because the bishop on b3 although it's blunted by e6 he can still become strong um, so then I decided after a think I didn't think for too long I mean I sat, there's a game where I sacrificed a pawn in the side mission a bit like this where I spent 20 odd minutes on it but this only, I only spent a few minutes and also it's a faster time control like the other one was in 4 and CL but this is a Manchester League which is 75 minutes for 30 moves and then back 20. Now this pawn sacrifice is very common to speed up White's attack and although it probably isn't that necessary in this position you could probably get away with g4 and h5 because Black's counter play is a bit slow. I decided to play it anyway his pawn sack to rip open the h line. The point being is that if it doesn't take I'm going to take on g6 and then play bishop h6 and if he takes with the knight which he should have done which is mandatory pretty much now as well, you also have to look out for exchange sacks on h5, but this position I'd go g4, knight f6, and then maybe maybe not bishop h6 straight away, because b4 is a bit annoying, driving the knight to an inferior square. I think knight g3 is best, um, clearing the e2 square for that knight. So if um, b4, drop the knight there, and then black's just wasted a move there, because I've brought another piece into the attack. And then I could start maybe doubling on the h line, play bishop h6 and get some meat going. And white has got a very good compensation for a pawn, but it isn't clear. Black will have counter play and will also be a pawn up. Anyway, back to the game. So he takes and g takes h and h5. And he says after the game he's underestimated it all, but look at this now. Look at that pawn structure, it's never like black's up a pawn. And now the G line could kill him, it's half, and his bishop's very exposed, and his king, and all of a sudden he's in trouble. Now there's a few good moves here. Maybe some like, by side type play quite risky looking move with knight G3. When you look, lose pieces, lose games. See, um, as soon as that D pawn moves, that knight's going to be on pre, and then he's also threatening D takes C4 with this with scores and my queen because the D line's open. See, it's a very risky move that I just played. Very risky, but it does keep an advantage even after d5. You see now my knight's on pre, but the thing is, is that I was lucky because I'd originally intended knight takes h5 in this position. My thought was that if d takes e4, then knight takes f6. And after rook takes f6, bishop takes f6, I just missed that my um, queen is kind of on pre than the rook. <laughs> So you know, I was thinking there, and then black could be a uh, pawn up here. And uh, a lot of white might have some comp, it won't be enough. And in fact, white, black's po white's probably in big trouble here. So that was a bit stupid. But luckily, I have to move bishop f4 here. A bit of a counterintuitive move because I always want to put the bishop on h6, but and also it looks like you can play e5, hit it, and then play d4 next move with a very strong center and strong play in the ca in the centre but e5 is a blunder and he actually played it quickly which I was glad to see he should just uh, move his queen somewhere say queen a5 but then his d-pawn drops off and uh, but then he can maybe play still some trouble with knight b4 for any knight and then move some threats but all in all uh, this shouldn't be enough but this is better than the game he plays e5, again a very good looking move, but I'd calculated the move bishop h6 is tremendous. Because I'm threatening to start sorts of nasties like queen g5, knight takes h5. And um, white, is now, white has now got a decisive advantage at move 17. And also, there's all sorts of flashy moves as well, I can play like rook takes h5, which should be enough. And black is now in serious trouble. And he panics a bit and plays knight e8. And now, um, again, a lot of several attractive moves. There is bishop takes g7, knight takes h5, rook takes h5, queen g5. There was all sorts. But the best move 
the computer seems to agree, is to simply um, take the pawn, D pawn, take the central pawn with tempo because although the knight's pinned, um, my, my rook's protect, my queen's protected, so he'd lose a rook and I'd only lose a knight if we swapped off. And um, the knight's an absolute octopus here, I mean, look at that. You just look at that, look at that raking knight there, and the other knight's really strong as well. You're going to see some raking knights soon. So he has to move his queen, and after queen b7, I played a move, which the only move of the game which I don't like, which I thought was killing at the time, but there was <coughs> but it's not the strongest move. It's very attractive, I mean, queen g5, I mean, it threatens all sorts of nasties, like knight takes h5, bishop takes and knight takes h5. It was killing on the spot, and I thought it was. It also ties his knight down to his rook because he's not developed his bishop. I mean, look at these spectator pieces. They're just not doing anything at all. They're all locked away on the queen side playing cards of each other. <coughs> look at all this I've got. I mean, that bishop, which you could have got rid of by force practically, is just an absolute monster. So, anyway, um. So this position is still winning, but the strongest way seems to be. Oh, I didn't come up. There we go. Uh, bishop takes g7, seems stronger. Knight takes g7, and now queen g5 here. And now um, knight takes h5 is coming, and practically nothing can be done, and black can resign this. But the problem is with this move order. I gave him the chance to move his king out of the um, firing line, which he does with king h8, and now his um, bishop's on pre, and um, so I sat, but I decided to um, go up and up with a crushing position by takes, takes, and knight takes h5, and this is absolutely crushing, nice and decisive. Let's look at some variations. By the way, he could never keep my queen in pre when his king was on g8 because of the um, bishop on b3. Let's have a look if he takes my knight. I'd planned to take with a rook, and now look at all this that's coming now. I could put the knight in f6 and block his f pawn from advancing so his queen can never defend h7, and then just play rook h1 and queen h6, and he's bust. So that's no good. What defensive tries I looked at? Um. What else could he do? I'm threatening queen takes g7, mate. He can move the f pawn now, which he did. Is there anything else? Seems that his only try was to move the f pawn, which he did. And now I play knight to h to f6, and just look at these raking knights and look how active my pieces are compared to his. I'm threatening rook takes h7, mate, which has to do something about. And then practically nothing can be done. He plays knight e6, attempt to move. <coughs> Which exposes his queen's defense of the pawn. Well, it doesn't. Well, it's, it's attacked three times, twice, and defended twice. But he's attacking my queen. And originally, I had planned to move queen takes f5, and <coughs> he's forced to play knight f8 to defend h7. And now I'd move my queen, and I'm two pawns up in an absolute crushing position. But which is violated the 4.5 by Houdini, but. There's no immediate win, and there's plenty of chance to mess up. However, however, however I'm playing quite quick, um, just you know, in the opening well. I spent a good 10 minutes on this move, and I managed to find an, an instantly crushing move. I mean, if you have a look, but all Black's defences are based on this move, Knight F8. Which defends H7 more, and, and, and to attack it again, I have to double my rooks, and that gives him um, a chance to play, play Rook A7, or bring his bishop in or something. Now I'd be winning, but not decisively. However, there was a crushing move, which is forced, mate. If you want to try and spot it, please stop the video now. <coughs> Have a sip of iron brew while you're doing that. Queen g6, taking advantage of the pin on the um, h palm. I mean, knight f8 now isn't in defence because of mate on g8. I'm threatening, rook takes h7, queen takes, queen takes mate. 
and there's nothing can be done. The only way to, in fact, I thought at first Knight G5 um, would a desperate computer with mate, but then I just take it and then go back to the original square. There is no way to prevent a mate. In the game, he misses my main idea and plays Knight F8. And look at the um, space left behind. His rook is no longer protecting G8, so we simply mate him one move. Bang. 24 move miniature against a potential banana skin. And um, that was um, a really good game by me, I think. Although my opponent was 25 points low rated, I've been playing bad in long play. And this new aggressive opening repertoire looks really promising from what I've seen so far. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, good attacking game. As for the um, other games in the match, we won 6.5 half. Although we were heavily outgrading them, but you have to win. And I was impressed by some of the play by our team. Especially we had um, some good young players out. <coughs> and the old Codgers won as well. And we're through to the next round at Cup. And we also play the same team twice in the league. So um, can't wait for some more. Hopefully it'll be 7 0 next time. Should have been 7 0 actually. Looking at the games. I was, in, I was impressed with the standard. I hope you've enjoyed my um, first video that's longer than 15 minutes. It's a long play game. Sorry if I've jumped on a bit. I must have spent um, quite a bit of time on um, a 24 move win. But I hope you found it instructive nevertheless. It might persuade you to play the um, Yugoslav against the Dragon, or take up E4, or even play the Dragon as Black now, explain some of the ideas. Please check out our cafe on Chess Cube. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. And I hope you like these new longer videos. I'll do some um, more soon. <coughs> but for now, please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.